Hi, I'm Mike Schlesinger, and this is Trailers from Hell. When I started at Sony Pictures in 1994, the number one thing I wanted to hopefully try and do was to put Sam Peckinpah's wrecked masterpiece, Major Dundee, back together, if it were possible. Fortunately, Grover Crisp, the invaluable head of Sony's asset management, felt the same way. But so far, he'd only turned up a few trims, just picture, no sound. So I said to him, could you look some more? He says, sure. And fully 10 years later, he finally managed to turn up about 15 minutes worth of track. There were still some shots missing sound, but this was at least enough to make a reconstruction. And we would come in probably five to six minutes short of Sam's intended length. But he actually went one step further. He commissioned a new score from the wonderful Christopher Caliendo to replace the god-awful score on the original film. Peckinpah actually detested it, as well as the dreadful theme song, Fall In Behind the Major, sung by Mitch Miller and his gang. Fall in behind the major. Fall in and mind the major. We didn't really feel we were violating any auteurist theories here. Let the major bring all of us back. Naturally, it would need a new trailer. And I had what I thought was a really cool idea. I know L.Q. Jones, and I thought, wouldn't it be great if I got L.Q. to narrate the trailer as a first-person reminiscence from someone who was actually there? He was up for it, so off we went. In 1864, an entire New Mexico settlement was massacred by a band of renegade Apaches. I hope he was dead when I did that to him. If he was dead, they wouldn't have bothered. Since the movie was not very widely known outside of Peckinpah circles, I thought it'd be a good idea to start out by letting viewers know what it's all about, and then segue into the history of the film's production woes. I decided to be playful with it, like using Hessen's line about my executioners in a way that pointed back to Sam, and an insert of a finger pointing to a map as if it were the location of the missing footage. I ran the trailer for LQ with a temp narration, and after watching it he said, Sam couldn't have cut it better which literally knocked all the breath out of my lungs. Because, let's face it, L.Q. Jones doesn't need to butter me up. It might be the greatest compliment I've ever gotten. He was a hoot during the recording session. We'd ask if he needed anything, and he'd go, Yeah, more money and a blonde. There's no blonde there, but hey, Santa Burger's not bad either. On the other hand, we were put through hell by the MPAA, which objected to what it called excessive violence, from a movie made in 1965. So we had to swap out a bunch of shots just to make them happy. I made sure to use dialogue scenes spotlighting James Coburn and Warren Oates because they were the cool cult guys in the show, and they balanced Heston, whose rep was kind of low at this point. He just plain clean shot a hole in me. Now you know I ain't no deserter. I was fixing to come back, I was. And it features one of the finest casts ever assembled for a Western. And in fact, since it has such an incredible cast, I also wanted to list as many actors as I could. I originally had 16 and then said, oh man, that's way too many even for me, and hacked it down to 11. I love that little chuckle LQ makes when he named Slim Pickens and Dub Taylor, because after all, they were the comedy relief. And of course, the line, and me, LQ Jones, is what really made it work for me. And as a final touch, I closed with Fall In Behind the Major this spring, a knowing little wink that told the fans that this was not the same old Major Dundee. It got some wonderful reviews, and I really felt so proud to have played a part in putting it back together. And I'd like to think that Sam is sitting somewhere with a bottle of tequila in one hand and a Mexican whore on the other, grinning from ear to ear with gratitude. <laughs>